So it finally happened. So I had actually applied for the Super Ambassador program like a year ago, but I was denied. Um, so I applied again, and I wasn't expecting these packages. I didn't get any emails from them. All of no, out of nowhere, I get a UPS notification that I have three packages coming from Staples, promotional, something, something. So after much research, I figured out, oh, it's the Ambassador program. I finally got into it. So let's take a look at what they sent me. Um, and I haven't actually read through the whole booklet yet to find out what the, all the perks are. So they sent like a little booklet too as well. So there's two bags here and a package that weighs like 10 pounds. So let's get right into this real quick. All right, first up. Ambassador t-shirt. Oh, it's like a windbreaker. That's pretty cool. Holy crap. Like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten magazines, drive magazines. Welcome, Super Ambassador. Sticker. Little magnets. Sticker. Sticker. Like. 27 booklets. It's a super light. I'm not sure what that actually is or what it means. Oh, and then the uh, Subaru Ambassador badge. Of course. Alright, that's pretty cool. Alright, guys, so I've been holding off on this install for a while now procrastinating on it just because for a good reason um, it looks like such a bitch of an install to do the pitch stop brace of course I'm talking about and then I also have the um, the group end pitch stop mount itself so here's everything I got laid out got the actual brace this is the mount got some extra brake fluid right there got my flare nut wrench hex kit Bleeder, vacuum style, some tools, torque wrench. Um, I think that's all I need. But yeah, I think that's all I need. So um, let's try and get with this install. The first things we're going to do is remove the intercooler. I actually never removed this before since installing, so I wonder if there's going to be any blow by, which would be interesting to see. So let's take a look at that. Quick trick, if you can't get these out, just use some WD-40. So this is bone dry. There's no oil blow by in there. What you see here is just the WD-40 I sprayed. So let's put this aside. So I just took a look at mine and there's absolutely no cracks or any of the spot welds are not broken. So I'm just gonna go ahead and proceed with the install. If you do have any that are broken, you're gonna have to stop here and get that repaired first. You can't just put the brace right on top of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the mount removed first and we'll go from there. All right, so we got the uh, OEM one out. So here's the difference. This is the one right off the car right now. And if you try to move it, you see the opening coming up? So I could bend it. But if you take the group in, do the same. There's barely, it's a lot more tight but not enough that it's gonna be really bad as far as NVH goes. It's marginally tighter. It actually says SD on the side too. So yeah, let's get this going. 
All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the clutch line. We're gonna work on that. And that's right here, the banjo line. It goes around and into the clutch slave. So I'm gonna use the flare net on that one in the 14 millimeter right here. All right, I'm gonna start off with the clutch slave cylinder. It's right there. You see that nut right there? So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen that first. And then we're gonna loosen the one, the banjo bolt. So let's go ahead and do that. Also got the line ready to go. All right, not that much spill. All right, Charles. So now we're gonna work on getting this one undone and take out the entire clutch line and go from there. So, so far it's been a little hectic. Um, but we're getting there slowly but surely this is taking a lot longer than I thought so let's go ahead and do that alright so there's the Clutch line assembly, the OEM one. Let's go and get the uh, parent one installed now. So, here's what the clutch bleeder looks like. You have the uh, the collection tank and the actual vacuum itself. So, um, I'll put a link to this in the description if anyone's interested. It was like 22 bucks off Amazon. Make life a lot easier. You don't need a second person to go pump the clutch. Alright, y'all. So, it's the following day. Um, I had some issues yesterday with bleeding the clutch. Something that I didn't find in the manual or instructions anywhere or in the, any videos for that matter, any instructional videos. And I don't know if it's just me, maybe this is just common knowledge. I don't know, so you guys could probably tell me here, but it took me about four hours I was working on bleeding the clutch. It got to a point where nothing, only I was only getting air out of the bleeder and um, the reservoir was topped off. Couldn't figure out what was wrong. So, Finally, turns out <clears throat> the reservoir, and I don't know if this is like specific for 2016 and up, because in the instructions or in the videos it says that do not run it dry because your brakes will catch air and uh, don't, then your brakes will run dry and you're going to have bubbles in your brake lines basically. But turns out they can't even do that because the reservoir has a divider in it for the clutch separately. So although when you look from the top it's filled to the brim, from the side it shows full, it's really empty. The clutch section is completely dry. It was run dry. You can't tell. So although it's filled to the brim, you just keep filling up brake fluid and it's going to keep going down. So, lesson learned. I feel kind of stupid about that, but it is what it is. And maybe it'll help someone else. So let's continue with this install. Um, it's been a pain in the ass so far, so let's go. Alright, so I'm going to be working on the driver's side first. I just loosened these two bolts right here for the master cylinder. Um, I'm going to remove those. Alright, just be careful not to press your clutch at this point because that thing will just pop right out. Alright, so we got the uh, driver's side done. Not for the passenger side, which is the harder side. Because we've got to mess with rudiments. hate those. Alright, so I got this bracket free. I'm just going to zip tie this out of the way back here. Alright, so as you can probably tell, I had to really fight with it to get that bracket off. It's on the pretty tight. I don't know if you guys can see all those scratches on the firewall, but... That doesn't matter, it's going to get covered up anyway by the pit stop brace. So uh, let's go ahead and get onto those rivet nuts. Alright, so I got my rivet nut tool set up right here. Let's focus on that. There you go. Got the nut, washer, and bolt. go 
flat rivet nut. All right, so we got both nuts right in. The one on the, uh, I guess, the driver's side is a little more difficult to get to. So you can see them both right there. So let's get on with this install. Get this guy threaded through the pit stop. washer and another bolt on this side so all right that's 43 pounds right there all right now I'm gonna go ahead and torque down all the other bolts hex screws and all that and I'll be right back we should be done all right we're all done with the install everything is torqued down so I'm just gonna go ahead and install the intercooler wrap everything up and we'll be good to go all right, y'all, finally done with that install. It was a pain in the ass to do. Definitely don't want to do that one again. Um, like I already mentioned the whole bleeding the clutch issue that I had, so there's a heads up for that. Um, it's a very tight space to work with, especially with the nut certs. And um, just getting everything tightened just right, uh, getting everything torqued down, all the little t attachments you need to get to the nuts and bolts and whatnot. So yeah, I'm gonna go for a drive now. And uh, I'll, let you, I'll let you guys know what I think. Alright you guys, so there you have it. With a pain in the ass install, so I'm sorry it wasn't the best instructional video. It wasn't really instructional at all, pretty much. It was just me installing it. Um, it was a really big pain in the ass, like I said. I don't think I'd do it again, but it's in. Group and uh, pitch stop and parent pitch stop mount brace. I just took it for a test drive, and the only difference I can tell is the clutch pedal feels the same to me at least. The only difference I can tell is aggressive shifting from first to second is a lot more, um, I guess you'd call it stable. There's no, it feels like there's a lot less drivetrain flex, I guess you could say. It's very smooth, it's a lot smoother. Um, that's the only other thing I noticed. So, um, take it for what it is, it's mostly for preventative. In my case, that's the only reason why I did it pretty much. So, yeah, if you guys have any questions, Make sure you leave it in the comments, and I'll try to answer them as best as I can. Make sure you guys subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.